Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Tuesday, April 7th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Accident Investigation Division Hit and Run Felony Unit. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Calfee. My name's Friday. A young woman had been run down and seriously injured. The driver of the car had escaped into the city. We had to try to find him. About that thing last night, huh? That's right, Miss Hunter. Well, look, I'm in an awful hurry. I gotta get going to work. All right, this is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Just sit over there. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Uh, there's some coffee there on the table if you want some. No, no, thank you. Well, would you mind pouring me a cup? You'll find everything you need right there. Two sugars. Yes, ma'am. What do you want to know about last night? I told the officers who were there all I know. Yes, ma'am. We read their report. We'd like to go over with you if it's all right. Seems like a waste of time to me. You'd spend a little more of it out trying to catch the kids that hit that girl. It'd be better all the way around. Yes, ma'am. According to what you told the officers last night, you saw the accident. Is that right? I saw it, yeah. But I don't think it was an accident. Beg your pardon? I said I don't think it was an accident. Yes, ma'am. If you ask me, I think that kid deliberately hit the girl. Deliberately. Why do you say that? Just the way it looked, that's all. What kind of feeling? The way he came barreling around that corner. Well, you must have seen her. She was right under the light. Didn't even make an attempt to stop. None at all. Yes, ma'am. I saw her, the girl step off the curb. Right under the light. He had to see her. Yes, ma'am. Well, anyway, she stepped off the curb and started across the street. Harry and me saw her. She started across, and then all of a sudden, this kid in the hot rod was coming right at her. Wasn't anything she could do. Uh-huh. Well, she kind of looked up at the car like, well, she was going to run. But she didn't have time. The car hit her and knocked her down. Did you get a good look at the vehicle? You mean the one that hit her? Yes, that's right. You bet I did. Passed right under the light. Got a real good look at it. I wonder if you'd describe it for us. Well, I told the cops all about it last night. Seems like that'd be enough. Why do I have to go through it again? Well, there might be something you didn't think of last night, Miss Hunter. Something you might have forgotten. Well, it isn't likely. But if you gotta have it, I guess that's the way it's gotta be. I hope we can get it over with fast, though. I gotta get down to the corner so I won't miss my bus. Well, if it'd help any, we can drive you to work. Now, what kind of a car was it, Miss Hunter? A hot rod. You know the kind. Low, two exhaust pipes. Kind of beat up. What was the brand name? Do you remember? Well, I guess it was a Ford. Looked like... Looked like one. I see. Hard to tell. It was kind of banged up, you know. I don't know why the police would lock cars like that in the streets anyway. It couldn't be very safe. Can you tell us what year the car was? Well, I'm not real good at that. Mm, but I'd say maybe 1940. Mm, might have been 1941. Beg pardon? I think it was a 1940. Might have been a 41. It was a pre-war car, though. Yeah, I'm sure of that. Was there anything about the car that would make it easier for us to identify? Not especially. Black Ford all beat up. I'd sure know if I saw it again, any place. Did you get a good look at the driver of the car? No, not too good. All I could see was that he was a kid. You know, maybe 19, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Sure like to see you get that kid. Is the girl all right? She looked pretty bad last night. Well, she's still in a critical condition. The doctors aren't sure yet whether she'll make it. Sure hope she does. Have you talked to her? No, not yet. Just a terrible thing. Kids like that running around in hot rods. Barreling around the city. Person's not safe on the streets anymore. Well, just because a car's got twin tailpipes, Miss Hunter, doesn't have to be a hot rod. Well, this one was. Even had that little sort of mm, uh, license plate hanging down the back bumper. What was that, ma'am? Something wrong with your ears? No, ma'am. Just kind of hard to hear you. Well, I don't know why. I'm talking loud enough. I think you ought to have them checked. Yes, ma'am. What was that you said about the plate on the car? You mean a state license plate? No, one of those with the club name on it. You know the kind. Well, now, there wasn't a notation of that on the report that we remembered. Well, I guess I forgot. All the excitement and all. I must have forgot. I understand. Did you see the name on the plate? Yeah, not real good, but I saw it. I wonder if you can remember it. Not all of it. The last part was wheels. Um, something wheels. Two words. You're pretty sure of that, I? Yeah. Wheels! That's the word I saw. Didn't remember it last night. I guess it didn't seem important then. Must be a lot of cars that have those plates on them all over town. Yes, we know. Gee, I'm never going to make it. 
Mm. Cold. Don't seem like it's going to help much. A lot of cars with those little plates. A lot of them. Yes, ma'am. And even if you do find a kid with one of them, how are you going to know he's the right one? Well, that won't be too tough. Huh? His car will tell us. struck a woman while she crossed the intersection of Olympic Boulevard and Connecticut Street the night before. When the ambulance arrived at the scene, the victim, who was identified as Mrs. Helen Chapman, was unconscious and was removed to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital for emergency treatment. At 1.14 p.m., we drove over to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital to talk to the superintendent, Dr. Hall. How is she? Condition so critical, she can't be moved to her own hospital. We're going to have to overhear for a while. Can we talk to her? No, hasn't recovered consciousness to the point where you can question her yet. Yeah. But we're administering serum albumin to counteract shock. How bad is she? No. Well, compound fractures of the femur, rib fractures, and associated internal injuries, including a punctured lung, brain concussion. We don't expect her to live. That's too bad. I have to go in and check her. The victim's husband is in the waiting room. His name's Carl Chapman. Thanks, Doc. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. You talk to the doctor? Yes, sir, we did. Is there anything new? Is she going to be all right? We don't know, sir. You better ask the doctor yourself. Why don't anybody tell me anything? All the time I ask how my wife is, they tell me to ask the doctor. Why won't they tell me? We wouldn't know, sir. I can't even find out if she needs anything. They won't let me see her. It's been over 10 hours. Nobody tell me what's going on. It won't be very long now. The doctor will let us know. It's easy to say. Wait till they let us know. It's not your wife who's in there. It isn't anyone you love. Why are you here anyway? Why aren't you out trying to get the rotten little punk that did it? We'll get to him. When? After Helen's dead, that going to be when you start looking? No, sir. We're looking for him now. We came over to see your wife. We thought maybe she might be able to give us some information. What do you want from her? The name and address of the kid that ran her down? Does she have to get out of bed and go find him for you? That's your job. Oh, let's talk about the police department being so good, but what are you doing? Standing around here waiting for my wife to point the kid out for you. Would you excuse us a minute, Joe? Yeah, sure. We'll wait out in the hall, Doc. Sure a rough one, isn't it? Yeah. Why, well, what's going on in there? I don't know. We better call the office and get a broadcast out on that plate. Call the National Hot Rod Association. Maybe they can give us something on that club. Yeah. Because I'm looking to. How is she? She was seven months along, baby on the way. Yeah. Dead, both of them. Frank and I drove out to the offices of the National Hot Rod Association on Hollywood Boulevard. We met with Wally Parks. He checked their records for clubs with the last name Wheels. There were three in their files. Two were in the eastern part of the United States, and one was listed as having headquarters in Alhambra, California. We obtained the name and address of the president of the club, and we drove out to see him. We found him in the garage behind the house working on his car. We introduced ourselves. What do you want to see me about? I understand you're the president of the Square Wheels Club. Yeah, that's right. Why? How many members do you have in the club? Eighteen. Eighteen actives. A couple of guys in the service. What's this all about, anyway? How come the questions? All your members have the metal plates with the club name on their cars? Yeah, get them when they pay the initiation fee. Why? Anybody else have them? Not legally. Well, how do you mean that? A couple of them not. Been stolen from members. Any of the fellows in the club drive a black pre-war Ford? Yeah, I guess we got about five of them. Can't you tell me what this is all about? All right. A woman was run down by a hot rod last night. One of the witnesses saw a plate on the car that might have been from your club. 
No kidding. That's the way we got it. Well, what'd the car look like? Twin pipes, pretty well beat up, white sidewalls. It's not one of ours, then. You sound pretty sure. What about the plate? Like I told you, we had a couple of them stolen. How come you're so sure it wasn't one of your members? Well, I know the cars in the club. They're in a yo-yo in the bunch. Yo-yo? Yeah, you know, a junk heap. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know. Seems like every time there's any trouble with a car over five years old, it's a hot rod. Take a look. I want to show you something. I've been working on it for three years. Got over 1,200 bucks in it. Take a look. A lot of motor. It's a new Merc engine. Multiple carburation. All the parts have been balanced. Motor's been bored out, stroked, got eight and a half to one compression, special camshaft, one and three quarter inch Olds valves, converted ignition, Lincoln self-energizing brakes, heavy duty shocks, and I've reworked the steering. That's a hot rod. Well, it's a good car, son, but what's it prove? Well, the car that ran the woman down wasn't one. How do you figure that? You said it was a wreck, didn't you? That's right. We haven't got a wreck that's allowed on the streets in this club. We got a safety check every month. Any car that isn't safe has to be fixed or the guy's out. A lot of clubs operate that way. Yeah. I'll tell you. Kids build rods for two reasons. They want the cars to run better, be more efficient, or else they want something a little different than you can buy in a showroom. Well, all this sounds real fine, but a woman was killed last night by a kid driving a hopped-up car. Well, maybe it had twin pipes, a loud muffler, but I'll give you odds from here to Bonneville that it wasn't a hot rod. I know how you guys feel. We're always getting it. Every kid behind the wheel in a second-hand car is a potential killer. The way the paper's pictures, we just roam around looking for somebody to run over. You check the records. I think you'll find the ratio between tickets given out to members of hot rod clubs, ones that work under the NHRA, and any other group of drivers will make the hot rodders look pretty good. Hadn't been a ticket in our club for the last year and a half. One before that was for overtime parking. I'm sorry, fellas. That car last night wasn't one of our guys. You can bet he wasn't a hot rodder either. Well, now, have you got any way of knowing who could have gotten that plate? Not right off, but we'll find him. Oh. There's only so many streets in Los Angeles. We'll find him. Guys like that make things tough on the clean drivers in this town. We'll find him for you. All right, we'll appreciate any help you can give us. But this is police business. If you find him, you call us right away. Oh, don't worry, we will. How do I get in touch with you? I'll leave you one of our cards. Anytime you call. Right. Well, I'll get on the phone and get the fellas rounded up. Now, if you turn anything, you call us right away. Don't try to take care of it yourselves. There's only one thing we're interested in. What's that? Proving to you it wasn't one of us. Showing you we're on your side. Well, it shouldn't be too hard, should it? Huh? There's a lot of room. We got the names and addresses of the Square Wheels Club and we talked to them. We checked their cars, and each of them volunteered to assist us in attempting to locate the hit-and-run vehicle. Frank put in a call to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital and talked again to Dr. Hall. He told us that the victim's husband, Carl Chapman, had been placed under the care of his family doctor and had been given sedatives to make him sleep. 7.15 p.m. I called Lieutenant Don Mann and filled him in on the developments. 8.47 p.m. Frank got back from the crime lab. Hi. Any word yet? No. I got a call from Al Doolin a little while ago. It's a hot rod club, huh? Yeah, he says all the clubs in the area are looking for the car. They divided the city up into sections. The members are all checking the streets. No luck, though, huh? No, not yet. They turned a couple of cars, but they don't check out yet. Anything on the wire? No replies. How'd you do? Oh, pretty good. Got the report here. Had a couple of sandwiches sent in. Got oh, you a good. Swiss on rye. It's in the bag. Right? Any coffee? Yeah, there's a carton there. Mm -hmm. Here. Oh, good. The well, lab sure did a good job on this stuff. All right. Yeah. Here's the scene. Here's the dope. The body was found 10 feet, 4 inches from the northeast corner. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I'd put it about here, wouldn't it? Yeah. 4 feet, 8 inches from the north pedestrian crosswalk. Right there. Yeah. They found particles of broken glass. Here's the shot of that. Checked them at the lighthouse. They're lenses from a Ford, 1940. That's the picture on them. And here's the um, gutter of the northwest corner. They found that bumper guard. Mm -hmm. I checked it. It's new. Any brand name on it? No. And they're sold all over the country. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. How about skid marks? Any sign of them? Well, none that they could find. Either the kid didn't have time to use these brakes or he didn't want to. Mm -hmm. That's what they got there. There's some rubber from a tire. Lee says he thinks they were made when the kid dug out to get away. 
just on the back wheel. Yeah, it looks that way. Mm-hmm. Sure indicates that he didn't mean to stop at any time. Well, that's the way Lee's got it figured, too. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not much to go on, is it? No, nope, they've come easier. Well, then go out and check the neighborhood again. They might be able to turn up a decent description. Mm-hmm. You start checking the garages in the morning. Try to turn a car with a broken headlight and a missing bumper guard, huh? You got it. Get run felony, Friday. Yeah. Is there anybody there? Uh-huh. No. No, keep it under surveillance. Yeah. No, we'll be right out. Be careful. Don't burn it. Right. Bye. That looks like it's going to go our way. What do you got? They found the car. Frank and I notified the crime lab of the find, and then we left the office. During a routine patrol of the streets in East Los Angeles, a radio unit had come across a car parked at the curb of Vancouver Avenue. They'd stopped to investigate and found that it matched the description that we'd sent out. We talked to the officers in the police car and they told us that they hadn't seen anybody near the vehicle. We checked the white slip and we found that the registered owner was a Gregory Moore. Listed was a Hollywood address. While the crime lab went over the car, we drove out to Moore's address to talk to him. He lived in a large house built in the mid-twenties. Frank covered the rear entrance while I rang the front doorbell. Yeah, what do you want waking me up this hour of the night? Police officer. You have a tenant here by the name of Gregory Moore? What about him? I'd like to talk to him. You're too late, Mac. He ain't here. Where is he, do you know? I don't know. Moved out this afternoon. Didn't say where he was going. The manager told us that Moore had come home that morning, packed his belongings, and left the house. We called the crime lab, and Lieutenant Lee Jones told us that they'd established that Moore's car was the one that had run down the Chapman girl. We talked to the other people in the rooming house. None of them could tell us where Moore might have gone. We put in a call to auto records, but the car was not listed as being stolen. Frank called the name into R&I, but he found he had no record. From the occupants of the rooming house, we found that the suspect had no relatives in this state and no close friends that they could recall. In going over Moore's room, we found a wastebasket that he'd used to dispose of articles he didn't want. In the basket, we found several match folders from a bar over on West 7th Street. We put in a call to the bar, but we found that it was closed for the night. From the manager of the rooming house, we got a good description of the suspect, along with the information that he received no mail and that he was apparently unemployed. We asked that we be contacted immediately if the suspect returned. 3.36 a.m., Frank and I checked out of the office and went home for the night. Wednesday, April 8th. After we contacted DMV and asked that they give us all information on the car, we drove over to the bar on West 7th Street. It's not open yet. Don't open until 10. Police officers, we'd like some information. Licenses back there in plain sight. Nothing going on in here. You have a regular customer named Gregory Moore? We just opened the doors. We got no say about who comes in. As long as they don't cause trouble, we don't. Guy about 21, 5'8 to 5'10. 165 pounds, blonde. Name's Moore. Gregory Moore. What's he done? We want to talk to him. About what? Police business. You seen him? Nothing that's going to get the bar in trouble. Now, look, that's a very simple question, mister. Have you seen him? Maybe, yeah. Tell me what this is all about, and I might be able to help out. Now, look, you're running out of time here. Have you seen Gregory Moore? Yeah. When? Last night. Here? Yeah, he was in, got liquored up. I tossed him out when we closed. Where is he now? You better ask him. Now, look, I'm going to tell you just once more. If you know where he is, you're going to save yourself a lot of time by cooperating with us. I run a clean place here. I don't want any trouble with the cops. My license is back there. I got no choice of the customers who come in. I don't want to get mixed up in anything. We're not calling it that way. That's the way it is. This is a clean place. Yeah, well, that's not what the book says. You've been tabbed a couple of times for serving minors. You run B-girls. You haven't served straight liquor in here for a couple of years. Now, if we have to get the information from you downtown, that's the way it's going to be. Get your coat. Oh, now, look, fellas. I was just trying to take care of myself. You did a real good job. Get your coat. Isn't there some way we can work this thing out? I don't want no trouble. All right, where's Gregory Moore? I try to run a fine place. A couple times I've been fooled. Now, once more, where is he? I got him up at my place. Is he there now? I guess. He got pretty loaded last night. He told me he didn't have any place to pad down. I took him home. What's the address? 1862 and a half Woodworth Court, room 14. All right. Let's go. Yeah. And don't try to call him. I got no phone in the room. If he's done anything, I had no part in it. I was just trying to help a friend out, that's all. Yeah, sure. You tell him that, how he got me in trouble, all because I tried to help him out. 
Yeah, we'll do that. And tell them not to come around here no more. Tell them to keep out. Tell them that, will you, for me? Tell them not to come back. Don't you worry about it. Huh? He won't be back. <laughs> the office and requested that another team of detectives come out to keep the bartender under surveillance in the event that he might try to contact the suspect. It took five and a half minutes to drive to the Woodworth Street address. It was a large building located at the end of a blind street. Room 14 was on the third floor in the front of the building. Frank and I approached the room and listened. There was no sound from the inside. Is the description. Yeah. Let's wake him up. Now, right, come on, Moore. Wake up. Come yeah, on, Charlie. I don't feel good. Go away and let me alone. Come on, Moore. Get up. How many times? Who are you guys? What are you doing here? Police officers. You're under arrest. Okay, get up. All right. Let Stand me alone. Still. I'll do like you say. Just let me alone. Stop. I ain't done nothing. He's clean. Is that no reason to push me around? All right, come on. Let's go. Where? Where are we going? Downtown. What for? Manslaughter. I didn't do it. You got the wrong one. I didn't do it. Come on, let's go. But you got the wrong guy. I didn't do it. I didn't know what you wanted. That's why I ran. I didn't know what you wanted. Well, you do now, so let's go. The suspect was taken to the squad room where he was questioned. He refused to admit any part in the crime. He was confronted with the physical evidence and with the ownership of the hit-and-run vehicle. The witness to the crime came into the office and said that Gregory Moore was the man she'd seen at the wheel of the car when Helen Chapman had been run down. Throughout the interrogation, the suspect refused to say anything. Where is he? I know he's here. I want to see him. I'll take it easy, Chapman. I heard you call him. I want to see him. I want to tell him. Is that the kid? We think so. Are you the one? Are you the one who killed Helen? Well, answer me. Take it easy, Chapman. Is he the one? The evidence points that way, yeah. Please. I want you to do something for me. What's that? Please, get out of here. Go away, please. You know we can't do that, Chapman. This man's in custody. Please, leave me alone with him. Come on, Chapman. Let's go outside. Just a minute. Listen to me, kid. When they put you in that cell, you get down on your knees and thank God they found you before I did. You understand? You thank him, and every day you live, you thank him. You do that because I would have killed you. All right, Chapman. My wife's dead because of him. You hear that? You killed her. They got laws to save people like you, but none for her. None for her and my baby. They didn't have any laws. Done for this. Come on. Pretty upset, isn't he? I want you to remember something. Yeah? In the years I've been in this department, I've seen some bad ones, real bad. Teenage kids that didn't know any better scraped up off the pavement and sent home to their parents. Drunks that were too loaded to know what went on. There's been a lot of them go through here, but you finish way ahead of the field, boy. You talk good. Bet you're on a lecture team around here. I'm getting fed up with you kids roaming the streets in those death traps of yours. I don't care about you. You want to wrap yourself around a post, you go ahead. We'll try to stop you, but don't you take somebody else with you. We've tried about everything in the books to make you understand. Doesn't look like any of them did any good. You all through? No, not quite. You killed a human being, a woman who didn't even know you. She never saw you until it was too late. You threw a ton and a half of metal at a 120-pound woman, and then you ran away and left her in the gutter to die. You wrecked a family. You tore it right down the middle and rolled over it. You've ruined the lives of all the people around that woman. You gave a group of decent kids a bad time because you stole their name. Now you get up on your feet and keep that smart mouth of yours closed, you understand? Can I ask you something? Make it quick. Running that woman down, how much will I get? I don't know, but it won't be enough. October 14th, trial was held in Department 97, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and found guilty of manslaughter, one count, and received sentence as prescribed by law. Manslaughter is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period not to exceed five years.